Hello, everyone, and uh, the next speech will uh, will be start it. One minute, and later they will share about becoming better contributor to social impact. And uh, welcome Ariel and Abisha for this. Hello. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, I see some familiar faces from yesterday's workshop. Hello. Thank you for coming back. Um, okay. So let's begin. Uh, our talk is about becoming better designer contributors to social impact, which is about designing uh, for open source. Um, so I'm assuming if you're here, you want to uh, design for open source uh, or contribute. So let's do a quick um, exercise. Uh, how many of you here, by a raise of hand, are already contributing to open source? OK, OK, cool. And how many of you have faced challenges with contributing? <laughs> OK, almost all the people who raised their hands. What does design in OSS look like for you? And how does it work? I can pass this around. And, um. Um, keep switching and jumping around. Um, in different kinds of platforms and like sending files and sending files and sending files and sending files and <laughs> like <laughs> and I don't even know what am I doing and, and like um, finding files in, in Google Drive and I cannot find it and, and, and why, why is it lost and yeah and yeah it's a very very frustrating process <laughs> so file management Well, for me, it's either begging someone to help with a design or um, someone with a really not so good skills doing the best they can and also which, which tool, how that people do know how to use and they find too complicated <laughs> and a lot with um, uh, accessibility for the project. Awesome. Thank you. I th hope we'll be able to cover some of this in our talk. And last question, do you have any specific questions for us for this talk? Like anything that specific that you want to learn, like apart from these two questions, anything else that you've come with? Uh, we can take those questions at the end as well during the QA. OK, let's do quick introductions. I'm Abhishek. You can call me Abhi. I have eight plus years experience in UI UX. Um, and I have been uh, like designing for an open source product before this. Uh, and I recently joined Superbloom uh, with Errol. Um, that's me. Hello. Hi. Uh, I'm Errol. I have been, I think this is an old uh, numbers. I think I've been doing design work and UX and product design and graphic design and content design and <laughs> um, lots of different design for more than 12 years now, probably 13, 14, maybe. Yeah, I'm old. Um, uh, <laughs> I'm near 40. Uh, I've been doing work in open source software uh, for five and six years, around five or six years. Um, both paid work and also lots of volunteer contributions. Uh, and I have been working at Superbloom for uh, one and a half years. Before Superbloom, I worked at um, the Open Food Network, which is an open source project that creates a platform for uh, farmers to sell their produce. Uh, so it's a completely open source platform. Um, I worked at Ushahidi, which is a Kenyan uh, open source software uh, that works on uh, democracy and elections and crowdsourcing information around human rights. And I also worked at CiviCRM, familiar with CiviCRM? I did des very difficult to design for, very hard, um, alongside many other projects as well. Um, I am doing a PhD at Newcastle University about how design is done in uh, human rights and humanitarian open source software specifically. And Errol is a design rock star. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, 
So Super Bloom, where we work, uh, is really focused on how who designs, who is part of the design process. Uh, and a lot of the time technology is in history has been um, controlled by certain specific people, very few people, and very rarely the users. So Super Bloom is really focused on how we make sure that people that are not often heard, um, especially in human rights cases, make sure that they have a voice in how technology is built for them, built with them, so that it's not just handed to them to use. Uh, so we do a lot of co-design, uh, familiar with co-design processes, collaborative design processes, uh, participatory design, familiar? Yeah, uh, participatory action research, maybe? Okay, so we use a lot of these methodologies to make sure that people are included in the process. Uh, the kinds of work that we do, people from yesterday will find this slide familiar um, from our workshop. Uh, we design with and for high-risk communities in remote and hard-to-reach, poorly connected regions to safely give user feedback and participate in the open source tools that they use. So these are a lot of human rights activists, journalists, um, anybody that uh, basically just doesn't get access to uh, a lot of the kinds of things that uh, people in more privileged positions will get access to. Uh, we do a lot of work for onboarding and bringing in uh, users that are not at all familiar with code. So we'll have uh, no code um, knowledge or and don't want to learn how to code <laughs> because they're a journalist or they're, they're, they're um, doing a different kind of job. Uh, we have also done work with decentralized applications and worked in the decentralization space uh, around um, uh, those kinds of applications before and a lot of onboarding for non-coder users into open source software. We work with a lot of funders uh, to make sure that they understand that the critical digital infrastructure that open source software is part of, design is important to that. So we want funders, people with money, to invest in design for those, those tools that are critical to digital infrastructure. Uh, and we also tr do a lot of work in the open source space and the design culture space to make sure that design is normal and uh, happens in open source and also that in the design culture, open source is normal as well. Um, so yeah, that's what we do. Uh, oh, awesome! So, um, so for our talk, we uh, like there are a lot of resources out there online that help you figure out why you should design for open source, why you should contribute, how to get started, uh, what to do, what not to do, uh, basic mistakes you can make as a beginner, and you should definitely talk to Terry, uh, uh, who gave a talk just before this. For all of these topics, he's, he's got a lot of info on that, along with a few links we've added here. But what we are going to talk about today is how we can become better designer contributors to open source. And some of the things that are not um, talked about or, uh, you know, because we focus a lot on the skills and uh, tools and processes. So let's take a look at a very high level view of an overview of what you're going to take away from this uh, talk. It's uh, when you're thinking about designing for open source, you have to also think about your users because they are the ones you are, your work is going to be used by, right? They're the main people who are, who are going to use your work. Think about the developers because they will help you implement your ideas, um, whatever you create. Think about the assets because that is how you will communicate your ideas with all of your stakeholders, the developers, uh, whoever you are working with, your assets are your way to communicate those ideas. Uh, think about other designers because they're the people who you will be collaborating with. And uh, 
like when you're not around contributing for that project, they are the ones who will take it forward. Uh, think about the product and business because all of your designs are aimed towards reaching a goal. It's not an end to itself. Like we, it's not about making something look beautiful. It's about achieving a tangible goal. And somebody who's running the business or product is, we'll, we'll go uh, deeper into all of these. Uh, but also think about the community um, because open source community and think about um, things beyond yourself. Yeah. And then, um, so let's uh, start with users. All users are important and everybody who you interact with and um, for example, designers, developers, product managers, whoever you work with, they're all going to be the, your users and not just the people who use the tools, right? And uh, so the, one of the challenges with designing for open source is that you may not find it easy to connect with your users directly. You may not always have access to them. So think about those channels, op uh, like communication channels, forums, where your users uh, report issues. You can get some idea about your users from those channels. And um, yeah, learning about your users means you'll have, uh, I mean, that's the main uh, way for you to take decisions as designers yourself without, um, you know, having to rely on a lot of different, uh, like that will give you agency to produce your work and, and do your design. Um, I want to actually go back to uh, about the users. I want to focus uh, for a, a small amount of time on this uh, aspect because what we do a lot at Superbloom is we prioritize what user security, privacy, uh, diversity and inclusion means. So when we think about open source, a lot, a lot of the time we think about pure openness. What if everything was open? Whereas sometimes when we're designing for tools that can be used in certain circumstances, like civic technology, uh, we need to be very, very careful with how the user feedback is being included in our tools and even how we communicate with users in issues. So if it, you ask users to give feedback in issue templates or via bugs, and they are exposing themselves to a risk by saying, this um, tool didn't let me vote here lo in a location, and that location is a very sensitive location around politic politics, then your open source tool has put that user at risk. So these are the things that we are always thinking about at Superbloom, is how do we make sure that user feedback is ethical uh, and that we are making sure that users are very safe, but also making things open, because open research helps all open source to be better, but we also need to think about how we're protecting people very carefully. Um, a lot of the users that we work with uh, on open source tools in like the civic space and the human rights space actually are really uh, unaware. They don't know what their privacy rights are. Um, and it becomes even more confusing when you bring open source licensing, dependencies, all those complications with open source in. A lot of users will go, huh? Like, <laughs> what does this mean? Uh, so as open source designers, we need to think about how we're designing with privacy, security, and the complexities of open source uh, infrastructure as well. Uh, swipe? Oh, no, no, no. Oh, OK. No, no, no. We <laughs> go back to the other one. <laughs> OK, so um, some examples of how we work with users. Many of you will find user journey maps familiar. This is a method of how we, uh, this is an example from a uh, open source tool that is about uh, helps users to understand whether their mobile device has been compromised with malware or viruses if they are traveling around the world, if they are journalists. So this is a user journey map of 
how and when a user might use a tool, an open source tool, to make sure that they haven't been put at risk of certain kinds of malware. Uh, and this is mostly used by journalists or human rights activists and different people. So this helped us to understand where a product, the open source tool, was going to be used most uh, critically. Uh, and this is a example of uh, when I took a, a developer issue. So this issue is very small if you read the original issue. It's like um, build, <laughs> build technology. And then this is how I translate a developer issue into a user focused issue. <laughs> so I describe the issue from a user point of view uh, and then I talk about different users, what is success for users, what are our design constraints. So there's a template here if you want to translate developer issues <laughs> to designer user issues. So one resource. Um, yeah. Uh, another resource that we created is uh, funded by Internews. Is this is called the a Dev's Guide 2. And it's a lot of scripts and resources on how to do user testing and usability interviews uh, that are security and privacy focused. So here you can um, view a number of different uh, like advice, advices and how to recruit user testers and example uh, emails and scripts. Uh, and also some uh, advice on how to do synthesis when you have all the user research. And this was created specifically for developers that are working on privacy and security open source software. Um, we also made a game. <laughs> uh, where's the game? Two seconds. Sorry, Abhishek. Right at the, this is the game that we made. Uh, and if you have a developer that you think is um, like, I don't want to do user testing, I don't know what it is, they can play this game <laughs> in uh, itch and all open source. So you can change this game if you want to. And it's just, you know, you, you click through and play. Uh, and you click on the acorn. <laughs> anyway, um, so where's the slides? Okay. Okay, so thinking about developers, like I said earlier, uh, they're the ones who are going to be building your ideas, and that's the reason why I've put them on number two, um, because they're really critical to your work, and, um, and they, yeah, they're in a critical position to implement your work. Uh, again, in many cases, when you're working in uh, open source teams, you may not have direct interaction with um, developers as well. So make sure that when you uh, create your work, it is self-explanatory. There are all of your assumptions, considerations, everything that you have thought of is included when you are uh, sharing your work with them, right? And you can learn a lot from developers as well, especially if they have worked with other designers. And in many cases, like working with a developer is a lot more a learning experience than other beginner designers because they will tell you what is feasible, what is not, what works, what not, because there are many times technology constraints, framework constraints, and you know, there's a lot goes on. Um, and um, working with developers now is a lot easier than it used to be because of tools like Penpart, Figma, that has made collaboration so, so easy. Um, um, yep, and Errol can give you an example. Um, this is an example of a, uh, another issue where I described the problem more clearly to a developer. Um, so again, instead of a small issue, it was how the problem was described, who we are designing for. Um, and then what the, describing what the user needs to do as well as acceptance criteria for, further on. So I like to try and blend user research explanations as well as like using developer processes like acceptance criteria to communicate what needs to be developed. 
Um, here is a lovely comic we made. <laughs> Developer team is built, building Feature X. The design team is testing Feature X. Uh, and then this is like, uh, we use this to explain like how user testing can improve. Even if you are developing, you can still design and test at the same time. Because a lot of developers were like, you have to do one and then finish, and then the next. And, but no, it can happen at the same time. Um, oh, uh, we need to, it's this one. Uh, this is another project that we created funded by the Alfred P. Sloan Foundation. This was a six month research project into how design and usability is done uh, and defined in scientific and research open source software specifically. So scientific research software like for biomedical technology, for astrophysics, for um, civic, um, uh, for life sciences, uh, the open source software that scientists use. Uh, and we have a, a lot of um, chapters, a lot of content to read about different um, understandings of like feedback and knowing your users, usability, accessibility, perceptions of design, and then a lot of different um, resources uh, curriculum for universities teaching design in science and research, uh, an assessment um, readiness for design. This is something that Abhishek made, the assessment. So this helps projects know when they're ready to start design. It's a really uh, cool resource. Okay, um, and the next thing is uh, thinking about your assets and design documentation. Uh, so basically, your design file uh, and all of your assets need to be very clearly defined. I uh, a lot of time. So basically, like treat other designers the way you would like to be treated yourself, in the in the sense that your design file should be easily accessible. I remember this one project where I was handed down uh, the file and I was like, uh, I'll have to work on this from scratch because I don't know where things are and how. So in that sense. Like this is connected to the part about working, um, you know, about with other uh, designers. So invest time in setting up your design systems uh, from early on. I have, after many, many, many projects, I've realized that if you, uh, like, if you're using Figma and if you use components design system, if you do it from day one, it's gonna save a lot of your time, not redoing those things later on. So, um, so yeah, I mean, and then. Uh, Design documentation is also a part of your asset. So when you're working on something, make sure that you document your process, assumptions, uh, you know, considerations, thesis, and make everything easy to read and navigate. Uh, imagine that you're not around to explain your design to anybody who's using it, and then uh, imagine if they're able to understand what it is and how they can take it from there. So that's how you can test your um, designs, because there's usability to the work you put out as well, right? A lot of designers don't think they should or could do documentation, but do documentation is, uh, I love design, and then I also love documentation. It's uh, nerdy. Um, so here's an example of a design system that Abhishek created for one of our open source uh, projects called Hera. It's a... Hera. Uh, so they basically, it's an application f uh, to help refugees uh, with their documentation, and this is where like one of the teams yesterday <laughs> also did. So they basically help the uh, you know the refugees like with the documentation, and yeah. yeah, and health doc uh, reports and all of that. And it's open source. It's open source. Yeah, cool projects to do design contributions to. Um, and here's another example of. Uh, design system and a file for a mutual aid resilience app that I worked on uh, beginning of COVID. Uh, and also an example of how I do different design labels in re repositories. This is how I categorize design uh, things in, in projects. Swipe? Oh, it's the swipe. Oh. Which no, it's so um, this is a, a linked in the slides, but this uh, is a really amazing resource from the Resilience app where this is onboarding for designers. All of the remote designers did an introduction uh, and then like this is the welcome, all in a Figma file. 
So onboarding designer, designers in the Figma files was really cool, as well as having pages for the design systems and also a uh, history, uh, history log. Uh, what's the word? What's the word for contributor version. log? Version, version control <laughs> for design in the Figma file, um, which is cool. Yes, and so um, you need to think about other designers as well, your OSS team. I know a lot of times like uh, when you're designing for an open source project, you might find yourself as the only person, but there may be teams, there may be projects where it may be handed down, like when you're not around, you will not always be contributing to that project. So, uh, so what happens when you know, you're not around and that file goes to another person? How will they read it, right? Um, and so from that perspective, design becomes sustainable. You contribute to the project sustainability if you think about like leaving that space better than you took it. Um, and so help onboard designers like uh, Errol showed earlier. Um, be welcoming. Mentorship is also a part of how you um, contribute. Um, another point that I wanted to make was, um, yeah, I think that's pretty much um, it. You want to? Uh, the power of um, designers gathering together to contribute is really amazing. Like yesterday, the workshop uh, was a really good example. But here are other examples of workshops for open source design contributions for projects that I, I ran uh, with Ushahidi, uh, one in Berlin uh, and one in uh, Bangalore in India around a uh, crisis response. Uh, I also ran one in Taipei back in 2019 for the Open Up conference. That was very cool. Yeah. Um, oh, is this the? Um, so this is the no, no, no. It's the video that I want to get. Yes. yes. Okay. Um, there's a link to this video, but I documented how I onboarded designers into the Open Food Network project. So this is all of the different pipelines that I created in GitHub for design issues and how they were structured, but also the onboarding documentation for designers on how to understand the project as they came in and also how to schedule meetings with me to be onboarded, to receive work, to get feedback. So this video, it's quite long, 20 minutes, but it will explain all the ways that I onboarded uh, designers into the Open Food Network project. Cool. Uh, and then next is product and business. I think this is one of the least talked about topics uh, for designers in open source. And it's worth paying a lot of attention to because what you're doing is not just designing screens. You're helping somebody achieve a, a, a goal, right? So, uh, I mean, whatever project you pick up, uh, they will have uh, a problem to solve for the users. And so your designs are um, you know, solving those problems. And our research showed that um, designers do not uh, spend enough time on learning about that project, that project's domain, and what the business goals are, uh, which is one of the leading causes for like, you know, tensions between different teams and uh, um, not making like a valuable output. So it, it's a big challenge in OSS contribution for designers. Um, and I want to leave you with this thought that uh, consider the project that you want to work with. Uh, let it be the one that you uh, want to work on for a long, long term. For example, three years, five years. Say you want to work on secure uh, VPN, right? Um, VPNs or a chatbot or uh, healthcare or any domain that you want to pick um, so that you can work on it for a few years and stay in the same space and you understand the, uh, the space so you can uh, contribute to it more effectively. But if you're just starting up, then you don't need to worry about it a whole lot. Don't think too much. Just start somewhere. Yeah. I don't know if any of the developers in the room have had problems with like Hacktoberfest when like you have one contributor that goes, I fix a small issue. Yay, I've contributed a typo. <laughs> <laughs> and then go and leave, bye bye. Um, but when designers like don't invest and tell, when I'm onboarding designers, when they can't tell me how long, how much time they want to be in the project for, it's very hard for me to plan a project for them to contribute like a good 
piece of work to, right? It's so difficult. Um, I made a really cool spreadsheet. <laughs> Is that possible to make a cool spreadsheet? Um, uh, it's, oh, sorry, Abhishek, I can't do that. Okay. So, uh, this is an open, open Google spreadsheet. It is a product management tool for a feasibility of feature development and ways of scoring how technically complex different feature options are. Uh, Abhishek, can you go to like this tab? Yeah. So you can score based on complexity and you can describe the feature and then the details of the feature in each line. And then if you go here, um, the, oh wait, sorry, back on the other um, tab. If you scroll down and scroll to the side over this way, there's a column for design hours, developer hours, QA hours, documentation hours. So it's a spreadsheet that kind of encapsulates feature development for, it took me a long time to make, <laughs> thank you. Please use it, it's <laughs> cool. Um, you want to go back? Oh, uh, sorry, one more. Um, no, just this one. Uh, Justin Flory uh, wrote a really good blog. Justin Flory wor works at Red Hat in the Fedora project. Uh, good friend, um, used to work at UNICEF, fantastic work, wrote a great blog post on examples of open source product roadmaps. It's really hard to do open roadmaps, but this is a good blog post. We're almost finished. Promise. Yes, um, and for the last bit, um, it's community, thinking about the community, because um, community is the heart of uh, open source. A lot of times, like if you're getting started, you may not be able to uh, contribute or create or think of things that are beyond you. You may want to uh, think of the project as you know professional development, learning. Um, but if you are able to, then by all means, just go and um, you know uh, think uh, like if you create a design system or if you create some assets, put it out there for other people to use as well. Uh, it could be like these uh, templates that Errol showed you. You know systems that you can use. Um, and other than that, of course, participating in community events like Cost Cup, uh, exchange ideas and learn is also a way to um, be a part of the community. Yes. Uh, OpenSourceDesign.net has a forum, uh, monthly meetings, uh, and also goes to lots of conferences and has a summit. Um, we also have a jobs board. Can you to this? Uh, so this. Um, I think we need to fix the Heroku thing at the moment, but you um, can find different jobs, either paid or unpaid, that need design contributions. Uh, so it's a good place to post jobs or find jobs for open source design. And we also have a podcast with over 40 episodes, so lots of designers and developers talking about design. Uh, so um, please, come on the podcast and talk about design uh, with us uh, or listen to the 40 or so episodes from different designers in open source. Uh, yeah. Oh, by the way, this is uh, the platform where I and Errol connected. <laughs> and my, so, okay. And now you. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, the, the podcast is uh, lots of different um, uh, designers talking about fonts, talking about tools, talking about uh, development processes, talking about ideation and design thinking, loads of different um, episodes, but yeah. Uh. Um, so yes, in conclusion, um, when, I mean, you can apply this to any project, but if you're designing for open source, think about the users, think about developers, think about the assets, other designers, product and business, and the community. So I think these three, uh, these six uh, uh, points will help you get through and get better designers. Um, that's it. Uh, this is just what Superbloom is working on in the future. So the kinds of things that we work on if you want to contribute or know about our work. So um, challenges for designers creating uh, GDPR is um, uh, the European uh, privacy, yeah, privacy um, act. So how to create compliant cookie banners, defining transparency, 
uh, trusted design and um, tech policy, uh, so design within tech policy. Uh, we're also working on a lot of work to do with, um, what are they called? Not They used to be called dark patterns, but that is a bad word to use now. We use deceptive design. Uh, so we're working on ha with um, the Web Foundation on how to design uh, around deceptive design and lots of um, other resources, coaching and um, building secure strategies if you want to know what we're doing. Um, and I think That's it's just, it. uh, yeah. Anybody has any? I know it, like we're kind of over time, but if anybody has any questions, we would have loved to have done, uh, have done this in like one hour. <laughs> Could you get a uh, slide you share today? Yeah, yeah. Uh, our slides are on Google Slides, so we can share the link. Um, where will we share the link? Is uh, we have a tag in the oh. Okay. Yeah. Ah. Okay. Yeah, we have our meeting notes today out for the share one. Okay. Cool. We will share the slides. Yeah. Hello, thank you for the talk. It was quite interesting. I just have a question. Uh, both of you, what is the biggest challenge you have ever faced uh, while designing for open source projects? Um, having developers redesign my designs is <laughs> <laughs> difficult. Um, uh, honestly, honestly, it is uh, in in all technology, not just open source, but in open source, this can be even harder. It is making sure that there is an understanding of what design is and how long it how long it can take, and that it doesn't always have to take a long time. So a lot of the time, when I come into an open source project as a designer and want to contribute, the assumption that developers often have is that they will need to refactor the code base to do design improvements, and that's not true. Um, they think that designers don't understand how technology works or that we're not willing to know or understand or learn. And I find that that's the hardest challenge is finding the, the uh, respect and the common ground to understand that we want to help as well. Uh, it's getting better. It used to be a lot, ba a lot worse, but um, those are hard conversations is justifying the design, uh, what's needed to do design in that space. And a lot of the designers that I've mentored have also had this problem where like they contribute a new UI and the GitHub issue is 50 comments long with, I don't think this is very good. And I don't think this is very good. <laughs> um, where like the designer has done a lot of user research to, anyway, that's the hardest thing is the time to understand each other. Um, I mean, I don't think I have like very specific one problem, but there are a lot of you know small smaller ones like finding support for uh, the project in terms of like funding, sustaining sustaining the project. Uh, collaboration is definitely uh, one of those like, and it's not just collaboration with developers, but with product teams. Like product man management is one of the really big. Uh, like, how do I figure out uh, what to build? Uh, you know, staying connected with the community is a part of the challenge. Learning from users continuously, because that's how you make an effective product, and it's not very easy to do in in open source. So I think it's like if you uh, if you become a part of uh, an open source product which uh, has these foundations. I was lucky to be a part of such a project where. Uh, the community and uh, like the users and the designers develop everything everybody were working together yeah, I so I was really fortunate to find such a project but those are the challenges um. yeah the same I've found in a lot of open source projects as soon as you say the word user research <gasps> no scary users um, sometimes like the open food network I, it took me six months to convince the Open Food Network to do user research, um, and it made the product better, but it was very hard. I had a lot of arguments, uh, and I don't like arguing with people. 
<laughs> it makes me it makes me cry. <laughs> Thank you for the question. It was a great question. And um, unfortunately, I'm a developer. Hi. <laughs> Welcome. Hello. We love you. And, and uh, uh, I wonder, uh, do you have any suggestion to that? Um, we, uh, how we co operate with uh, open source designer? Uh, give, give me more tips. My one, uh, I have many tips, but my number one tip is mentor a designer. Find a designer that wants to learn about open source, become their friend. Teach them about the terminal, teach them about version control, teach them about GitHub. They will be very happy that you have like, reached out to them. Uh, that's the number one. I have many developers, SAPTAC, in my life that have spent many hours with me helping me understand the parts of open source I don't understand and have become my friends, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, and has helped me design better for the, the tools, so. And I helped you with a logo once, you designed a logo and I, so I gave back. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think uh, before Superbloom, I have worked all this while as a team of one designer. So everything I've learned is together with the developers. So um, I think that's one thing. Uh, okay. Okay, cool. Um, thank you for sharing today. And I have uh, one question about the uh, product management. It's about, um, you have a product roadmap on your slide. And uh, I'm curious about uh, how do you define the roadmap and the priorities? Because it's important about the, how to achieve the business target or what you want to bring to the world. So. Um, but uh, maybe it's my first time to be an open source community, but I seldom to hear about um, how to then uh, deal with the product management. That's it. Mm. Thanks. Do you have, I, do you have ideas what you want to say? I'm not sure I got okay. it, uh, How to prioritize product management, uh, yeah. how to prioritize and what to prioritize. Uh, yeah, I thought you might with yeah. you product <laughs> manager. Yeah. Um, oh, m most open source in history is um, the decisions are made by the one developer that built the open source. <laughs> no more. <laughs> this is the end of that. Um, I think uh, if I would love more open source to make decisions on what to build based on how users use the tool and not just users that are also developers but users that all, all kinds of users and i think that makes for better open source but it's still difficult it's hard to takes a long time to convince um uh, and agree that that is the right decision sometimes what I've done in previous projects is I've decided to fork the project. So the project, I know, yeah, <laughs> risky. Um, the project with the original developer wanted this direction. And from user study, this direction was what the users wanted. So we forked the project and built what the users wanted. Um, which you can do in open source. It's uh, correct. The open license allows you to do this. Uh, hopefully in the future, it will get merged upstream, hopefully. But that is a rebellious <laughs> way of doing user research in open source. Um, so very quickly, I am currently reading, like I just recently read a book, it's called uh, Continuous in user discovery i think yeah, yeah, yeah. uh so maybe you can that will answer a lot of your questions about like prioritizing basically you have to build agency uh with being able to explain why you want to build that and what value it will bring these are the two questions you if you answer you will be able to uh talk about the priority like if it's a if it's a small feature and it 
leads to 80% of the impact then go for that one rather than like making small tweaks and not having that much impact mm. yeah okay. Okay. Thank, you. thank you so much okay thank you arrow and abishas share and uh, this is our last speech and thank you for everyone to participate in this event and today you are awesome Thank you. And also, we have the QR code. If you are, uh, oh, by the way, this this room was, uh, is held by WT and Warman Tech Maker, and uh, we have more uh, open design promotion or developer meetup and US UI designer meetup. If you are interested, you can uh, scan the QR code to learn us more. Thank you.